I must start by making an apology. I'm so sorry, Nike, for all the bad things I've said. Welcome back guys, we are back with another shoe review. But first of all, let me explain that apology. Everyone that knows me is gonna be pretty surprised to see that I'm reviewing a Nike running shoe. Over the years, in store, doing lots of gait analysis, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of people run in their shoes. And to be fair, I've seen some running pretty terrible. So I've got to admit, I'm not their biggest fan, but this shoe, has really impressed me. Today at Run For Adventure, we are reviewing the Nike Epic React Flyknit. I know we're a little bit late to the React party with the Epic React Flyknit 2 coming out, but better late than never. I also picked this shoe up super cheap, so I thought it was perfect time to get some miles in this shoe and to give it a review. Let's talk about spec on the Nike Epic React Flyknit. First of all, the Nike shoe is a neutral road shoe. It comes in at 130 pounds uh, RRP in the UK. It's running off a 10 mil offset. So we've got 28 mil on the heel and we've got 18 mil on the forefoot. Weight wise, comes in at a nice light 239 grams in a men's UK nine and 195 grams in a women's UK 5.5. The Epic React Flyknit obviously runs with Nike's Flyknit upper, so giving you that sock-like construction, so no tongue. It's a one-piece upper, so you get that nice fittedness around the midfoot, obviously keeping the shoe pretty light and super breathable as well. The Nike shoe runs off their React midsole, which is designed to give you a really lightweight, super durable, and really responsive level of cushioning. It also has these deep grooves that are cut into the midsole compound. That's designed to give the shoe a bit more flexation, so it's not too stiff. Super flexible, so it moves with the foot in a natural way. They've also put in a bit of a heel color, so we've got this TPU heel color, just to try and improve a bit of heel stability in the shoe because it's so soft through that midsole. Last but not least, when it comes to the midsole, we've also got this tougher rubber on the toe area and on the heel area, just to try and increase the longevity of the shoe. So that's the spec on the shoe, guys. When this shoe was launched, there was a massive marketing media campaign from Nike. There was all kinds of stuff being thrown out about the shoe, stats, statistics, facts. Softer and springier and lighter and more durable. We set out to create a new foam and we ended up basically reinventing cushioning. Whenever there is a lot of money spent on marketing and Nike have got to be the world's best at it, I'm always a little bit skeptical about the shoes. So let's find out if them facts were true. I've put around 50 miles in the shoe so far and I can't believe I'm going to say this, especially about a Nike shoe, but I really, really like it. Yep, you heard it. I really like this Nike shoe. We'll start with the upper first. This Flyknit upper, and I've tried quite a few of the old Flyknits out, and I always found them a little bit big, a little bit sloppy. I didn't feel like it was gripping or holding my midfoot. This Flyknit is very, very different. I've got quite a narrow foot, so I do struggle sometimes with shoes being a bit too wide and a bit sloppy. First time I took this out of the box, I couldn't believe the fit. It was a bit awkward to get into first. It was very tight around that midfoot, having no tongue, being that sock liner construction. But the first time I put it on, super comfy. Felt locked in, dialed into that shoe. You really feel like you haven't got an upper around your foot. There's some really nice little features as well. The heel collar being one, that little heel tag, really helpful when it comes to putting them on. Like I said, I've done about 50 miles in the shoe and no irritation, no rubbing. It just felt super comfy straight away. Really, really great fitting shoe. We'll show you some close-ups on the upper so you can see, but you've got a slightly different weave pattern on the shoe. So obviously quite a wide weave on the toe for ventilation, but then a much tighter weave around that midfoot. 
and it really feels like you're getting some structure around that midfoot. Lots of shoe brands on the market at the moment talking about shoes, returning energy, giving energy back to the runners. I've spoken about it before. And Nike made some bold claims about this epic React cushioning. But I must be honest, it actually feels like you are getting some energy back when you run in it. It is really comfortable, it is really light, it is really responsive. You really get a lot of feedback in this shoe. You match that up to that flying it upper and you've got one responsive, comfortable package. What Nike have done by cutting these grooves in the midsole is brilliant. You know, it really, really does increase the flex on the shoe. This is one flexible midsole. Clever in this construction, they've added this TPU color on the heel. With the shoe being so soft, which is lovely, and flexible can cause problems in running shoes. I've seen it time and time again in store. When a shoe is super soft and super flexible, it can be really unstable on that heel. So this collar, this TPU collar on the heel is genius by Nike. It really does give that soft, flexible shoe a really good level of stability on that heel. I'm sure you can tell by now that I have enjoyed running in the Nike Epic React Flying It. It's not all rainbows and unicorns there is a few things that i have been a bit let down by so first being the arch i felt on some of my longer runs in the shoe that the shoe's quite flat internally it hasn't got a lot of support and and i don't like a lot of high instep in a shoe anyway my foot shape is quite flat when it comes to my arch but i did feel towards the end of a longer run that my arch was getting a bit tired because the shoe is so flat inside. The other slight negative about the Nike shoe isn't actually a negative for me, it's a positive. I'm very narrow. This shoe fits like a glove for me. If you had any width to your foot, you would struggle to even get your foot in this shoe. It is very snug, it hasn't got a tongue, it's that sock construction, and even with my narrow foot, I found it quite hard to get into. I really did need this little loop on the heel to pull my foot into it. So I think if you've got a wide foot, maybe not the shoe for you. So that's a bit about the spec. That's a bit about how I feel it ran over the miles I put into it. So as always at Run For Adventure, let's get some scoring on this shoe. Number one is price. What do we feel about the price? So the shoe retails at 130. To be fair, I paid half that for it. Would I spend 130 on it? Yes, I probably would after running it and putting 50 miles into it. It's quite a lot for a shoe, but you can see there is a lot of development in this Nike shoe, there really is. Having run it, having felt how good the shoe feels, if I had to spend 130 pounds on a pair of these or a pair of the React 2s, I probably would. It's still a lot of money, I understand that, but a run for adventure, we're gonna score the shoe seven thumbs up out of 10. So number two is comfort and performance. And to be honest, this shoe pretty much ticks every box. We've got a super lightweight upper, a really well fitting upper if you've got a narrow foot, don't forget. Also, we've got this really responsive cushioning on the midsole. So if you're doing speed sessions, it feels responsive. You wanna be up on your toes, you wanna to be running quick. If you wanna go out for a nice steady recovery run, this cushioning feels great at slower pace too. Really comfortable, again, almost like you haven't got a shoe on. The one downside for me was the heel offset. I'm used to running in a shoe with a much lower heel offset and I know it's subjective and I know it's what we get used to. I spend a lot of my time in, you know, say a four or five mil offset. So a 10, quite a big step up for me. I did find in some of my longer runs that I started to notice that 10 mil offset a little bit too much. I still really enjoy the mileage I put into this shoe, but for me, if that was a six mil offset, this shoe would be killer. So. We're gonna score it high. It might have been a bit higher if that heel offset was a bit lower, but at Run For Adventure, we're gonna score this a really strong eight out of 10. And number three, durability. Always a really important part of a running shoe. We want it to be durable. These shoes cost a lot of money, so we want them to hold up to lots of comfortable, enjoyable mileage. 50 miles into the shoe, and it's looking great. You know, 
I did hear quite a lot of negative feedback initially when the shoe came out about wear on the rubber. It seems to be wearing really good. I think the areas that look worn, the shoe comes like that. It's made that way so that it doesn't wear too quick. So I think early on in the shoe's life, a lot of people thought it was wearing when maybe it wasn't. So we've got that tougher rubber on the heel and on the uh, forefoot, the toe off area. That's holding up really well. 50 miles in, not a lot of wear on the midsole or on the rubber on the toe and the heel. Upper, looking great. You know, it's still very fitted. It's not stretched or given at all, which to be honest, I thought it might do with a few miles in the shoe. I thought this flying it might become a bit sloppy, but not happening at all. Durability, when it comes to the Nike Epic React flying it, again, strong scoring. We're gonna give it another big eight out of 10. Number four, last but not least, is looks. You know, we really love the looks of this shoe at Run For Adventure. I went for the all black stealth colorway, but the shoe comes in hundreds of different colorways. Pink, orange, blue, gray, white, black, every color under rainbow. So there will be a color out there to suit pretty much every runner, I feel. The guys at Nike know what to do when it comes to making cool, looking shoes. At Run For Adventure, it's going to have to score big when it comes to looks and we're going to give it a massive 9 out of 10 when it comes to looks. So tallying all them scores up, the Nike shoe scores a really really good 32 out of 40 and believe me, I'm pretty surprised at that. Let's come to a conclusion on the Nike Epic React flying it. If you're looking for a neutral road shoe, you're narrow on foot shape because if you're wide, you really won't fit in this shoe. But if you're narrowish on foot shape and you're looking for that shoe that's gonna cross over track, tempos, intervals, long runs, recovery runs, and you wanna do that all in one shoe, this is definitely worth a try. It really does kind of do all them things really well. Another thing I never thought I'd say about a shoe, we get a lot of brands into the store and they're talking about lifestyle shoes. This is a lifestyle shoe. I don't really understand lifestyle shoes. If you're a running brand making running shoes, surely they're running shoes. But I kind of get it with this. You know, if you want a shoe that you can wear casually out and then go running in the evening, this shoe really does that. Maybe this is a lifestyle shoe. I can't believe I just said that. That's the review on the Nike Epic React Flying It, guys. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you can get hold of a pair of these at a discounted price, I couldn't recommend it enough. Get a pair of these and give them a go. So really hope you liked the review, guys. Hope it's helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Maybe go and check out some of the other content that we've got on the channel. Get involved with the review too, guys. Any comments, leave them below, please. You know, I know the shoe's been out for some time and we're a bit late to the party. So if you've been running in it, you put lots of miles into it, you agree or disagree with what we've said, please get your comments below. It's really interesting getting your feedback and reading how you feel about these products. So get commenting, guys. We've also got that awesome competition running in the review that we did on the Salomon Predict RA. So if you haven't watched the review, get along and watch it. To win the prize, all you've got to do is get commenting below. So leave your comments in the comment section and you could win that awesome prize from Salomon. That is a wrap guys. We've just managed to get hold of a pair of the new awesome Hocker Speedgoat 3s. Big fan of the Speedgoats, so just about to get some miles in that shoe. So that's gonna be our next shoe review. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. And as always on Run For Adventure, stay safe and keep on running.